During the elections of uh, Uttar Pradesh Assembly in 2011, the BJP had made very serious allegations against the bre brother of the then Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Shri Maya Sh Kumari Mayavati. Today, in an expose which has come out of a newspaper, most of the information that the BJP had brought out then have really been brought to public notice all over again. We reiterate taking this opportunity to say that it is a major case of corruption which we see here where the brother of Kumari Mayavati running apparently 76 odd companies, most of which have no activities to claim. But from among them, seven as shown in the newspaper today have had transactions totaling 700 odd crores of rupees for services which are not described received money, transacted cash, and also have made such services and transactions and sale of equity, sale of shares, which are clearly highlighting that there has been a misuse of the access to the chief minister and therefore worthy of investigation. Even during the Uttar Pradesh elections, after we submitted the dossier with documentary proof, we were given to believe that the CBI and enforcement directorates were investigating into the matter. We have not heard anything about, uh, from them about these allegations. But with this information coming out in public domain, through the media, the BJP actually demands now all over again from the central government answers for questions that we are raising today. Will there be IT notices served to these companies? Will there be investigation conducted by the enforcement directorate? What explains these cash transactions? What are the services provided by these companies that the transactions have received such huge payments? Will the finance ministry make sure that come IT, the Department of Income Tax serves notice to these companies or is the alliance being kept alive? We know the position of the BSP when the debate on FDI and multi-brand retail took place. When the on record the speech was very much in favor of those small traders, small businessmen, small farmers, who will be at great risk on the exposure to investors from abroad. The methodology adopted to salvage this government is more than seen by the people of India. But will the central government now tell us as to why action is not seen in getting the answers from these companies? Will the Corporate Affairs Ministry search and seal the documents of these companies? Is there something which is stopping the Congress government from taking action against an alliance partner's brother, chief's brother? There are lots of questions which Sri Anand Kumar, the owner of these companies or the director of these companies, who happens to be Kumari Mayavati's brother, who has got to answer. But I think much more Questions have to be answered by the finance ministry, the Congress party, and the UPA government. And as to why it has taken this long for them to even act on complaints which have been given. And today with this expose coming from the newspaper, what stops them from answering the questions? Are IT raids not appropriate for companies with one lakh of rupees as 
their equity participation receiving several hundred crores for services which are not described, for properties which are not identified, which have been sold and money has been transacted. We demand that action be taken against these companies owned or in which Kumari Mayavati's brother is sitting there as the director and the Union Finance Ministry through their IT departments explain as to what till now has been action taken on these companies. This is a major revelation which we had earlier brought out during the election and till today we have not heard anything from the government. The second issue that we are raising here again is something which the CAG and its report will say when the government is going to table it in the uh, parliament, we'll get to know about it much more. But the CAG has brought out during its process audit of the one-time loan waiver scheme which was given during 2008, a scheme which was clearly brought out by the then Finance Minister Sri P. Chidambaram, keeping 2009 elections in mind. He hadn't even drafted the process, the ministry hadn't drafted the rules and regulations which would guideline, set the guideline for the banks to implement this waiver scheme. More than 52,000 crores of rupees was involved in it. And the beneficiaries who were the suffering farmers who should have received this loan waiver, apparently many of them who were deserving did not get it. And those who got it were not really the worthies. And several anomalies have come out of this CAG process audit, which was conducted between March, April 2011 to March 2012. It is shocking that the RBI and the NABAD, both of which were involved in it, have not even had an oversight mechanism. This has come out clearly as reported by the media in the CAG's report. There were two finance ministers of the UPA2 who were involved in it, UPA1 and 2 involved in it. P. Chidambaram was involved in sketching the details, drafting the whole scheme, and during the implementation, it was Sri Pranab Mukherjee who saw the implementation, released the funds, but did not have an oversight mechanism. As a result, because the CAG report was questioning all this, in January 2013, the Finance Ministry apparently has issued directives to the, uh, to the Reserve Bank of India and to NABAD to reclaim all the false waivers which have been given and also to bring to book and to make some officials accountable. These are the typical ways of the UPA. Yes, you're going to make some small officials accountable. But what about the two finance ministers who had in a hurry for the elections which were coming in 2009, prepared a draft scheme, rushed it through, implemented it without any oversight mechanism? Is there any accountability being put on the finance ministers? How could you bring in a scheme which involves so much of money, public taxpayers' money, You clearly did it with a, you know, uh, objective of meeting the demands of the election, I suppose, for the votes, I suppose. But when the money has gone to the wrong hands, it's the taxpayers' money. You are now going back to the officials to question those who have implemented the scheme. But what about the responsibility of the finance ministers who did not even wait for the guidelines to be brought out, and you started implementing a massive scheme? of one-time loan waiver to the farmers. The beneficiaries have not gained out of it. The implementation suffered because of guidelines were not there. And today, going back to the officers and the bank is just not enough. What is the accountability on the finance ministers? The BJP demands that the UPA government explain as to what role the finance ministers played in drafting, in designing the scheme but implementing it without any oversight. We want the government to speak on it. 
the two major questions relate to a huge sum of money. One is the loan waiver, in which you've not really implemented it with certain kind of guidelines for the institutions, but you're going back to retrieve money from not so deserving farmers who benefited out of it. Is it workable? Even your guidelines were not implemented. Now your rectification activity which is going on doesn't seem to have any basis. You're just trying to find some scapegoats now that the CAG is coming on you. We demand answers on both these issues, whether it relates to the UP, former chief minister's brother's matter, or on this matter of loan waiver, which has been implemented without proper guidelines, both on which the finance ministry is answerable.